Dear friends, welcome again to a new program of our series, The Verdicts of Science Creation. And uh, we have our guest today. Shall I say again? You might as well, Mike. Uh, Mr. John Mackay, International Director of Creation Research. Um, I'm going to nail you right away mm -hmm. the title and questions. Okay, so just be prepared. We have all sorts of very interesting things on the table, so watch out for these. <clears throat> so the title of this program is going to be uh, today, Adam and the Apes. Okay? Mm -hmm. To begin with a scripture verse, I'll read a Bible verse and, um, and ask you a couple of questions. So, do you realize the apes couldn't do that? Uh, I can't read. I have to think about it. I have to think Good. about it. Can they think? <clears throat> let me read the Bible. You just messed me. <laughs> just messed. We have all sorts of news today. You know, apes writing poetry. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Okay, so <clears throat> we read in Genesis 3.20 uh, the following, and Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. So we know for sure that uh, Adam named his wife, okay? because we read that in the scripture. We can be utterly dogmatic of the fact that God was the one who named Adam. Mm -hmm. okay? Moses wrote it down that Adam's name was Adam. We can be sure that God did that. Uh, my question is, first of all, uh, what does Adam mean? Okay, the, the DM bit in Hebrew refers okay. to things like blood, so it refers to red, so okay. it's not unexpected to find at the bottom of some Bible pages it refers to the man made of the red earth or the mm -hmm. red clay, mm -hmm. so that's where the concept comes from. Okay, so that gives us some sort of a clue of how he may have looked like? Well, I think we could be dogmatic that he wasn't Australian, but he was better looking Surprise. than you. <laughs> and me. Can we just cut that off? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we, we know for sure, as Genesis 1, uh, 26 says, he was made in God's image. God's image. Right. Okay. And he was made out of the dirt. And he wasn't made to be a monkey, even though we make a monkey of ourselves sometimes today. Okay. So he did not look like a monkey. Well, he did not look like a monkey. I mean, he had two hands, okay. two arms, etc. Okay. But I bought my toothbrush here today. Do you know one thing Adam didn't do with a toothbrush? I mean, uh, have a look at it. There's evidence. I'm looking. You're looking? Nothing happens. <laughs> okay, do you realise okay. in a good world, yes. in a perfect world, yes. the first man wouldn't have needed to clean his teeth? Oh, what a blessing. <laughs> I mean, it, we, we, we tend to overlook such simple little things because we're so programmed to think of man coming up from the monkeys mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. we invented toothbrushes. Okay. But in reality, in a perfect world where Adam ate his fruit and had his teeth mm -hmm. cleaned by the mm -hmm. roughage and the good bacteria in his mm -hmm. mouth, Adam, regardless of whether he looked better than you and me, <laughs> and regardless of whether his name has reference to red, mm -hmm. Adam didn't need to clean his teeth. Okay. That came later. Okay. You just uh, mentioned a couple of seconds ago, the following. So you mm -hmm. said, Adam had... Can I have my toothbrush back? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, it's a sinful world yeah. these days. <laughs> you should trust me better. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you said Adam had two hands. He had two feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, monkeys have the same. Okay. Monkeys actually have four hands. I brought in a bit of evidence today, this banana. Would you please peel it? Do you realize monkeys can do that? <laughs> I mean, they do have some things in Thank common you. with us. Yeah. But you're sitting here with your head at the top end, and mm -hmm. they could actually do that with their feet if they worked hard at it. 
And uh, you would have real difficulties because they've got thumbs on their feet. You don't want me to try now. I don't want you to try. <laughs> yeah, no. I did. Mm. Okay, so you've peeled the banana, yes. and they can eat it, and you can eat it, yes. right? Yes. And then you need to clean your teeth. Yes. Okay, now if you carefully put that banana down, seriously. Oh, okay. Thought We're going to connect all this better. thing together here, and I brought along one of my deadhead friends today. Yes. Um, this is Neanderthal. Okay. Okay. Now, nice to meet you. <laughs> now connect all the dots. Banana, Neanderthal, and toothbrush, and we're talking about man made in the image of God and the first man being called Adam. And what was that colour again? Uh, some red, reddish. Red, okay. Um, mm. What do you think they've all got to do with each other? What? The um, toothbrush. The banana, the, banana. the toothbrush, Neanderthal, and Adam's name meaning red. Copy. Bit of a puzzle, isn't it? You see, because Neanderthal used to be on display in museums as a half ape like hairy, stooped okay. over, blackish creature. Okay. And uh, in the last little while, they've discovered little striations on his teeth, the same as you get, because I've seen you after you've been in a restaurant picking up <laughs> one of those little sticks and running it through your teeth, isn't that I was true? still hungry, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> they were free too. <laughs> but you realise. You were using a toothpick, yep. and we've got abundant evidence that Neanderthal now used a toothpick. Not a toothbrush, okay. but he used a toothpick. Okay. Ah, um, have you ever seen a monkey use a toothpick? <laughs> For eating it, maybe. No, I've never seen that. <laughs> okay, but the reality is they've got hands, you've got hands, they've got hands for their feet, so they okay. can actually undo the banana with yeah. their feet if they try hard enough. Okay. Neanderthal definitely used toothpicks. Okay. What's the red got to do with it? This is a hard Still test, isn't it? I mean, yeah. this is an IQ test yeah. for the average person out there. In the last little while, they've dug up some of these bones, and the bones have still got, you know, matter inside them from which mm -hmm. we've been able to extract genes. Okay. So he really isn't billions of years old at all, or millions of years old, or tens of thousands. He's still got genetic material inside because his bones. Because if, 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 if the Neanderthal would have been millions of years old, no tissue or Yeah, hundreds of thousands, of, tens of thousands. Nothing. The stuff would, okay. would disintegrate. Okay. That is for sure. We can measure the yeah. lifespan okay. of this material oh. in mm -hmm. the laboratory. But we've mm -hmm. extracted the material out, and we've now been able to actually test these genes okay. to see what they are. Okay, we found several genes, uh, one of which is associated only with human beings who can speak. Okay. You and I are speaking. Yes. The monkeys don't. No. The apes don't. No. The gorillas don't. The chimpanzees don't. But what we've got now is the first proof that Neanderthal man actually had a facility associated with speech. Okay. It's pretty important because skulls don't say much. Have you noticed that? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So when you have a look at Neanderthal <coughs> man <coughs> with his deformed eyebrows and his sloping head, mm -hmm. etc., he's always been regarded as half ape and half mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. For many years he was on display in museums, then abruptly he's disappeared from many museums. Mm -hmm. But now we've got evidence that he had you know, the DNA associated with speech. So, okay. does that make him monkey like or man like? Well, human like, better. Man like. Man like, yeah. Okay, so he didn't use a toothbrush, but he did use toothpicks. Okay. He has got the facility associated with, with speech. speech yeah. And mm -hmm. where does the red bit come in? I could offer you a free banana, <laughs> right? But what I'm doing I'm is, is, is tantalizing you <laughs> yeah. because one of the genes that was extracted from this material, okay. they've actually taken it out and they've put it in, in one of our pigment cells. You know yeah. the cells yep. that make the skin color right? Yeah. And the interesting thing is it started to produce the reaction which goes with red hair. Now oh. red... Red is associated with, um, you know, a substance called carotene, okay. and this began to manufacture the same pigment materials mm -hmm. in a present-day living uh, melanocyte or a, a pigment-producing mm -hmm. cell. So what you'll find is that we've now got evidence that not only could he have the fact facilities associated with speech, he had red hair. Okay. Okay, uh, now so think carefully. Yeah. In most museums, we've had him on display as an ape-like creature. Yes. Ape-like creatures usually portrayed as black. Uh, yes, and black-haired and so black on. Black-haired yeah, and black all of that. Yeah. Red-haired individuals who yeah. can speak, what colour is their skin normally? Well, 
pretty fair. Pretty fair. Yeah. Good. So what we've got with Neanderthal is a total turnaround mm -hmm. of the so-called evidence that showed he was half ape and half mm -hmm. man until he's more like a fair-skinned, red-haired, speaking European. Using toothpicks. At using toothpicks, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. Mm -hmm. So creative enough, and he cared about his hygiene to actually clean the stuff out from amongst his teeth. Okay. Now, think carefully. Yep. God made Adam. He made Adam in his image. Okay. Adam's name is associated with red. Right, okay. This guy here certainly comes after Noah's flood. Yes. His skull, we've discovered, as we've mentioned before, that these protruding eyebrows are actually associated with deformity that's due to coming cold, loss of vitamin D. Sort of rickets. Uh, Ricketts is, is, is the technical mm -hmm. name, right? And you end up with jelly bone syndrome. Mm -hmm. When they first sent astronauts into space, mm -hmm. right, uh, their body got a soft bone syndrome for oh, a really? different reason because up in space your body detects that it doesn't need to make hard bone because there's no gravity pushing oh, much on you. Uh -huh. So it withdrew the calcium. But in the case of Ricketts on this Earth, if you don't get enough sunshine, your skin doesn't make vitamin D. The vitamin D determines where your calcium is deposited. Mm -hmm. If you don't get calcium, your bones are soft. Mm -hmm. So as you grow up, then gravity pushes down, your skull flattens out, mm -hmm. and this weird shape mm -hmm. is, is the result. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we know he wasn't black. Okay. Right? He had fair hair. Yep. Uh, red hair anyway. Most probably had fair skin, and he could speak. Yes. Does that qualify as any baboon or no. chimpanzee or anything no like way. that you can think no of? No way, no way. No so, way. in other words, it's not the evidence that disagrees with what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. It's the opinions of men who've tried to look for evidence to make us connected mm -hmm. with apes. Mm -hmm. And there isn't any evidence there. This guy was as distinct from the monkeys and apes and gorillas as you and I are. Mm -hmm. But the shape of his skull tells me he was already on the way down. Now, are you willing to do um, something unusual? I mean, I've really strung you along in this program. Bungee jumping? <laughs> no, no, we won't go that far. It's <laughs> hard to actually film. Would you like to take my Neanderthal skull and hold it up alongside of your head so we can compare the good looks of both of you? I'm no, sorry. I mean, right there. Just be okay. careful. Don't drop it. We sue people. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, now hold it up, bit further, bit further, higher up, higher up. That's one, my... one of you is good looking, that's right. <laughs> but the interesting thing is, if, if you can just um, uh, look at him in the face for the moment, you yes. can see he's got two little holes at the back of his eyeballs. Yep. Okay, now if you tip him upside down, he's got a hole underneath, can you see that? Yes. Okay, now if you wanted to find out what brain capacity he had, you actually fill up that bottom hole, you plug up the, the holes behind the eyeballs, fix right. up, yes, yeah. fix up the holes uh, where his ears sort of go through, okay. and then you can fill it up with sand or water. Mm -hmm. And do you know what the result is? It's interesting. Uh, well, I, I've been taught in school that their brain was way smaller than ours. So Yeah, we, we see that progression from yeah, chimpanzees, yeah. you know, 400 cubic yeah, centimetres, yeah. <clears throat> then he's somewhere in between, and we're way up the top because we've invented computers. Okay. We've made books, and we are so smart. But if you do this, and you probably better put him back down before you do drop him. This just doesn't look as being small. This is the, the regular size. This that's, is a, this that's is a skull. A average, regular size. That's a, 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 an authentic scientific cast, so we can do this accurately. So this is exactly as big this as is exactly it, as big as is it not is. Right? It's not small. And what you'll discover is if you fill him up with water and then pour the water out. He ends up with up to 200 cubic centimetres more brain space than you and me. Now, in modern computer terms, because many of our watches will be thinking in computer okay. terms, that's a, a lot of hard drive space, you know, a lot of extra memory space. So it's either more neurons, mm -hmm. or it's more matter, it's more connections, or it's all the above, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's no doubt about it, we've not only proved he's not on the way up, we've proved that we're on the way down. down. Now, have you heard of Cro-Magnon? Yes. Okay, um, did you have study Latin at school or Greek? Uh, yeah, sort of both. It's really helpful when you study some of these languages because scientists 
use Latin and Greek because yeah. the ancient forms are dead languages, so no one's going to change the meaning. Yeah. I mean, when English people went to Australia, <laughs> they changed the meaning of some words, right? <laughs> and they picked up some new words from the <laughs> Aborigines, and now the English don't know what we're talking about <laughs> at all. But with Greek and Latin, it okay. stays pretty yeah. much the same. Yeah. It's an unspoken language. So Cro-Magnon simply means big cavity or big cave, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And do you know what's interesting about the size of his skull? Was it smaller? He was up to 400 cubic centimetres bigger than you and I. Bigger. Bigger, right? Okay. Now, that's not the impression you get in the high school textbooks, no. is it? No. We see a progression upwards, which is evolution. Yes. But in reality, it's on the way downwards. Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to open up my uh, laptop here. Okay. And I'm going to switch it on and just leave it there for a moment. Okay. Because we pride ourselves on these things, don't we? Yes. On technology. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We see it as a real improvement. Okay. Now, you've also trained in theology, correct? Yes. Yes. And isn't it true that not only the Bible says God was made, man was made in God's image, mm -hmm. doesn't it say that we sinned? Yes, it does. And from then on, the history of the world, God never calls the world good again. Yes. And we've done quite a few programs on that, mm -hmm. but we never usually apply it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't mind applying it to other things, Yes. but the Bible actually applies it to us most of all. Mm -hmm. God made us good, we were made in his image, man sinned, and we've gone downhill from mm -hmm. there. Okay. Cro-Magnon, 400 cubic centimetres more brain space. Neanderthal up to 200 cubic centimetres more brain space. You, 200 cubic centimetres less than dear old Neanderthal. This is embarrassing. It is embarrassing, isn't it, right? Which brings me up to uh, my laptop. Have you bought a new laptop lately? Nope. No. Would you like to buy a new laptop lately? Uh, shall we go? No. <laughs> Okay, and I'm, I'm smart enough to be able to hit these buttons yes. and uh, make it do things. Okay. And, of course, it can only do things because somebody has programmed it. And do you know how we've actually programmed this to work? They evolve. Oh, no, no. It never happened by itself. No. We've actually made them in our image. Okay. We put in a dictionary. Okay. We put in a language. And then when I sort of click on the right buttons... Yeah. things will come up, but only because there's a program in there already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here's, here's the interesting <coughs> puzzle. We see this as on the way up. Mm -hmm. But all the evidence tells us the reason we need an extra brain on the outside is because we're actually on the way down. Mm. Now, you've heard of Noah? Yes. Okay. What's he famous for building? An, an ocean liner. Okay, an ocean liner, the world's first floating yes. zoo. Okay, <laughs> remember the story? Yes. It, it, mostly people only know it from their Sunday school versions. Yes. Right, they've got Noah in his white coat, there's a giraffe out the chimney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. There's, he's got sandals on, you know, and uh, that's all they know. Mm -hmm. But if you ponder the details, it's a really interesting clue as to this progression. Mm -hmm. Okay, go over the story with us. God comes to Noah and tells him what? Uh, that uh, the earth is filled with violence, that he's going to bring an end to all this, mm -hmm. but he found grace in his eyes, and he commands him to build a boat. Okay. Um, how big was this boat? Uh, I'm not good at maths. Uh, <laughs> That well, uh, are you big. proving my point that I'm right on the way down? You want me to read it out of the Bible? No, no, no. The reality is it was a big boat. Yes. Right? The world's first floating zoo. Mm -hmm. God was going to send two of each kind of animal on board. Now, the interesting thing is how many times did Noah have to load up the animals and make the boat float to see if it wouldn't sink? I mean, to test it. To test it, yeah. No, never. never. Ah. We don't read about it. We don't read about yeah, it no. at all. So what we're really reading is an account where God comes to Noah and says, Noah, build an ocean liner. Uh -huh. And Noah says, okay, and does it. Okay. Now, what boat school did he go to? None. None. That's right. Um, how many lifeboats did he put on the arcs in case it sank? None. One for each animal? <laughs> right. There isn't uh -huh. any at all. Yep. And so, excuse me a moment, my computer's telling me a message here, so I'd better go and use my brains to actually switch it off because we don't want people reading my emails, yeah, do we? Yeah, yeah, right? of course. That does happen, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it's a sinful world. Yes. Well, why don't I just click this off? You see, we have here a machine made in my image and uh, we need all of this 
to prove that we're supposedly on the way up. Yes. But in reality, the Bible says God made us perfect. He named Adam. Adam's name refers to red. So he wasn't made in the monkey's image. He was made in God's image. This guy, seemingly at least one of them, had red hair and fair skin, but more brains than us. Mm. Hmm. Would you like to predict the future of mankind? <clears throat> Perhaps you wouldn't. Better not. Better not. Okay. Well, while, while you've still got enough brains, Romulus, yes. um, you can still read the Bible? Yes. Would you read us Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 again? So that they know I'm just not making it up. Okay. So Genesis 1, 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, now what part of that tells you that we were smart enough to invent toothbrushes? Smart enough to invent laptops in the end? Well, at least two, we were made in God's image, and mm -hmm. we were given dominion out of that. Okay, so we were made in God's, God's image, image, and God is the creator. Yep. Right, now this brings up a really important difference between men and monkeys and gorillas and chimpanzees and all their hairy mm -hmm. cousins, right? Because mm -hmm. man alone was made in God's mm -hmm. image. No other creature on this planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, not the cows, not the no. dogs, not just, just human beings. Okay, you looked in the mirror this morning? You saw your image? Uh, should I be honest? No, well, you actually have improved it a fair bit and the girl in the tried, makeup room tried. <laughs> tried really hard to make it as good as possible. Yeah. But the one thing you didn't see was a chimpanzee and you didn't see any creature exercising the ability to be creative. Yeah. That's because true. man alone is made in the image of the Creator God. Mm -hmm. So that when you are asking questions like the evidence for Genesis 1.26 being mm -hmm. true, most people just go to the fossils. Yep. But this guy's dead. Yep. He's not doing anything. Uh, we know he invented at least one thing, a toothpick. Oh, yeah. All right? yeah. We know for sure now he had facilities associated with speech. We know he wasn't on the way up like the evolutionists have portrayed him. We know he was on the way down. But he's quite a while before us. Yep. Right? So we used to have a lot more brain space for this creativity. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at the differences between men and monkeys, concentrate on what would it mean to be made in the image of the Creator God. Can you think of some things that God is like? Read us that verse again. Okay, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and, every, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Do you realize it said God could speak? Yes. And God said... Yeah. Okay, there's not one monkey talking about this mm. program out yep, there. I know. There's not one chimpanzee who's going to send an email to the director saying, Oh, that was wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. Have that Australian again. There's not one gorilla who's going to have a program in competition with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can speak, and they can't. And that speech capacity is actually part of this creation. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the same way, I have a speech program on my laptop. Mm -hmm. But it didn't get there by itself. It was put in mm -hmm. by its creator. Mm -hmm. Now, it's there because the creator put it there. Okay. Now, have you uh, had your laptop for a while? Mm, yes. What's happened to all the programs the longer you've had your laptop? Do they get better? No. They, what happens? Uh, they just got worse. Yeah. yeah. So the evolutionist really needs to realize that in the world he lives in, the real, real world mm -hmm. by itself does that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're looking at this as evidence in the history of man. Cro-Magnon, impressive. Mm -hmm. Neanderthal, even more brain space than you mm -hmm. and me. Mm -hmm. And sadly, you and I, way down at the other end. We may not have got as far as we're going to yeah, go, yeah, but yeah. we're still on the way down. Now, mm -hmm. okay, you're the theologian. God not only can speak, what else is he like? You see, if we're going to be made in God's image, okay. think of some of the things that would be different between us and the monkeys and all of their relatives. Okay, if we, we just stay with the verse, I mean, we were given dominion. What's that mean? By God. I mean, uh, we were given the right to exercise um, government, um, to decide. In other words, when I go and study all of the 
ape-like creatures, yeah. I don't notice any of them trying to bring the lions under control. Yeah. I mean, that would that, be very that, convenient because yeah. lions yeah. eat yeah. monkeys, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a whole monkey conference. We must do something about <laughs> these lions, right? Yeah. Yeah. They don't exercise dominion mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. um, so that you would find one of the facilities of man is the ability to organize and control. Yeah. Yeah. And that is true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Some of us better than others. Yeah, right? But the reality is, it is a facility of human beings. Yeah. What else do we do? Oh, boy, we invent things. So. Okay. What sort of things do we invent? Laptops we create? It didn't happen by itself. So yeah. we create because God created. Yeah. Monkeys don't do this. No, they don't. There's no first Bill Gates monkey. Yeah. Right? Uh, they haven't got round to creating these sort of things. And I believe you've written some poems. Yeah, some. You took words and you actually put them in a musical type mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's even some people who think they're okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a few. Okay, can you name one orangutan that was a poet? Uh, no such colleagues. <laughs> right? The, the, it just doesn't exist, no, right? No. So what you'll discover is that that creativity even shows in our words. Mm -hmm. What other sort of things come to your mind? Because you see, many of these things are things that the psychologist is working hard on to try and make the monkeys look so like us. And yet, if you and I study them, we're actually so provably different. Have you ever taken a paintbrush? Yeah. What have you done with it? Well, it depends on what was the paintbrush What did for? the teacher want you to do with it? Uh, well, to draw some painting, picture, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you've heard of people like Rembrandt? Oh, yes. A bit Unf better than you with a paintbrush? A tiny bit. <laughs> even Picasso pa sold his paintings, right? Yeah. <laughs> no one's even bothered with yours. Yeah, well, but have you noticed that yours are better than the ones that they put in the magazines to illustrate monkeys can paint brushes? Well, differently, yes. Yeah. That's uh, I mean, obviously, yes. Okay, it's really yeah, true. Yeah. They really are very, very different indeed. Yeah, yeah. So what you'll discover is when we look at all of the attributes of God, the creativity, the fact that he speaks, the fact that he's spirit, right, all of these things show up. Have you been to the first Monkey Baptist Church? <laughs> No such thing, is there, right? So man actually exercises a spiritual realm as well. Even when you go and visit the pagan tribes out there in the middle of the jungle, they all have a religion. It may be animistic, it may be spiritistic, but they will organize themselves to have a religion. Even the evolutionist has got one. He's trying to be, become God. He won't call it God, but he wants to get better and better and better. And how long does he want to live? Well, uh I guess with all this genetics and uh, so on, they probably want to live forever. Yeah. In other words, they recognize death is not the not, way it's yeah, supposed to yeah, be. Yeah. Well, I've got one last thing for you to think about at okay. the moment. You don't mind me asking you all these tough questions? You might have what done a very good what job of... After inviting you here, <laughs> boy. But you, we, we have to s stretch ourselves into the time, so mm -hmm. just keep it short. You see my laptop? Yes. You know the old story about um, if we give monkeys enough time, they'll be able to type Shakespeare? Yes. Because the evolutionist says, given long enough, everything can yes. organize itself. Mm. The experiment's been done. Somebody wow. gave enough money to a zoo yeah. to give the monkeys computers. Yes. Do you know what the result was? They typed thousands and thousands and thousands of letters. We had Macbeth 2, <laughs> Hamlet 2, no. No, no, no. They typed largely M's and S's. And people, Microsoft. No. Yeah, not Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was where the, the bottoms, the, the, their <laughs> bottoms actually sat on the, on the keyboard. I'm serious, right? Okay. The kazoo has posted all of this up, <laughs> and you can actually go and see the results. <laughs> and you know why they had to call an experiment off? No. Time wasn't sufficient. The monkeys urinated all through oh. the keyboards and killed the, the laptops. That's the real world. In other words, we are so creative and intelligent mm -hmm. compared to them, even though our brains may be on the mm -hmm. way down, mm -hmm. we've still got enough brains to mm -hmm. realize mm -hmm. that there's something wrong. There is a problem. Our, our life runs out and we're trying to solve it. Okay. But most of the solutions are, are not going to work because mm -hmm. they assume death is physical. Okay. So, um, um, you said most of the solutions won't work. I mean, let's take that uh, now at the end and say most or none of our solution 
solutions would work. It's true. So sort of, let's see if, if the problem can be solved, or maybe it has been solved already. Um, if we read Genesis one uh, twenty seven, according to my notes, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Okay? Um, if we take a step forward and read the, this was the first chapter, the third chapter, mm -hmm. and um, read verse, verses 9 and 10. We read about the Lord God calling Adam and saying him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. So we read on the first, second page that God created Adam in his image. Mm -hmm. And we read two chapters after. Adam saying, I was afraid of you. Yes. Was, is, is this any reflection of God's image back to God? Well, you will find that what's happened is Adam has sinned and his image has been defaced. Okay. The image of God has been tarnished by sin mm -hmm. and God is without sin and Adam can no longer appear in God's presence mm -hmm. because sin mm -hmm. covers and tarnishes mm -hmm. and ruins the image of God mm -hmm. in man. Mm -hmm. So that we tend to see things purely as physical. So the scientist is trying to find a physical solution to death mm -hmm. when the Bible says the real problem is a spiritual one. It's sin, and we don't die because we get old. We die because we're sinners. I mean, uh, it looks like uh, contemporary science does the same as Adam did, trying to go the material way, Adam did the same thing. He, he did. He picked Remember some, he picked some yeah, leaves yeah, and like tried to cover himself. Materialistic and philosophy. The do the same. So... Um, correct me if needed. In between the first and the third chapter that I just read the verse, um, something dramatic, a tragedy happened. Okay? You, you find that your Bible tells you that God made the world good, man mm -hmm. was made in his image, mm -hmm. man sinned, and the image of God has been defaced. Okay. Sin has ruined that image, mm -hmm. and the penalty of our sin is why we die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The scientist who says, give us long enough, we'll find a physical solution, will fail because death is caused by a spiritual problem, mm -hmm. and therefore it needs a spiritual solution. Okay. Um, there's a spiritual solution written down already in the third chapter, right mm -hmm. after the fall. Um, we read in Genesis 3.15, the Lord saying, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, that it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, already in the third chapter, right after the fall, God made a promise that one day the seed of the woman is going to definitely crush the head of the tempter, mm -hmm. and he's going to crush the, the head of death, actually. So, <clears throat> for those of you thinking after this program, what am I supposed to do? Materialism doesn't work. Adam tried his best, you know, to hide with fig leaves. Um, we know of science trying to improve genetically, make us live forever, change genes, uh, uh, cryogenetics, uh, freeze us and revive us some days after. It just doesn't seem to work. And why why in the world should we find something um, out of matter, which is perishable, to fix something that God has fixed already? Okay. And 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus came on this earth and definitely fulfilled the promise of crushing Satan's head, and so claiming victory over death and giving us the promise of uh, um, having the possibility to get right with God. So, for those of you who would really think of putting not to just matter back on track um, physically, but to put your soul and spirit back on track with God, um, get to your Bible and get on your knees and uh, ask the Lord to fulfill this precious promise of being forgiven by what has been accomplished 2,000 years ago by the Lord Jesus. Just ask for forgiveness, and He's going to fulfill His promise of forgiving you because of His Son. Thank you so much for being with us today. Mr. Mackay, thank you so much. I hope we shall see each other and uh, these folks over here. May the Lord bless you. Have a good day. Bye.